foreboding. What are you doing, Kev? I'm on the Patreon thing. What's that? It's it's um well, well there's this guy on YouTube. He makes videos on YouTube. He makes some great content. And what he's done is he's he's, he's 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 sort of linked with this this website that uh, allows people to to sort of voluntarily make a donation to him. So he's, he's making a little bit of money to support support his his videos. That was pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, so I suppose you just give him a couple of bucks or something like that. He gets himself a coffee with it. Or yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, ah, mm. interesting. Mm. <laughs> Hello and welcome to In the Court of the Winton King. Uh, check out our new Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Winton King if you want to buy us a coffee. Thanks very much for that. Today we are reviewing You Cannot Pass! <laughs> Gandalf. Gandalf! <laughs> Why should I welcome you, Gandalf? What are we doing? Okay, well, we're doing something... We've not done before. Oh, it's too not in the Oasis um, manner of things. No, no, in a much more sensible way. Yeah, this is deathly serious, this is, because we are looking at one of the greats. We are looking at one of the greats. Yeah, of the proxy. Yeah, certainly my favourite drummer. Yeah. We're going to review the Bill Bruford, uh, the autobiography. This one? Yeah, this one. This Bill Bruford biography. How come we've both got Bill Bruford? Bill Bruford. Mm-hmm. Autobiography. Yeah, we should. You should read the Bill Bruford biography because it's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you haven't read this, are we going to egg this? A book egg. Yeah. Are we? I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah, we'll egg it. Uh, if you like what you hear, and you think, "Why the hell haven't I read that already?" Yeah. It has been out quite a while. To be fair, uh, we're going to put a link in the description. Uh, to Amazon mm-hmm. uh, and we'll try and do all areas uh, and if you fancy clicking it and we'll get some biscuits with our coffee which hey, would be nice we've got some mercenary <laughs> now haven't we uh, yeah I, I it's a th- I'm no, I don't think I've ever mentioned it on the videos but from from quite an early age I've always loved music biographies my bookcase is full of music biographies it's basically Douglas Adams and music biographies and nothing else <laughs> I love them. I love them. Well, you know, reading about the bands, and that's that's where my knowledge comes from. That's all the facts <laughs> it comes from reading these books at an early age, and it's just filled my brain with information. In 1973, this <laughs> um, some of them are autobiographies, some of them are biographies, obviously band biographies. Being more... generally, the autobiographies aren't as good, I think, because obviously they. They're not going to do the warts and all normally, are they? Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but this, then the Bill Bruford one. This is the Bill Bruford one, which is it's quite long. Um, I tell you what, I really, really like because uh, I don't like hardback. It's too big, taking it on holiday, you know, all that stuff. And I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm quite uh, slow on uptake. So you know, three members of my family have um, Kindles. I'm still not Kindle. I like a book. Mm. Um, but this is great because it's not hardback, but it's just just a bit of folded card, <laughs> which means that it's pretty tough. So that's great. Um, but yeah, it's not really an autobiography. It's called Bill Bruford, the Autobiography. But I think what makes it good is that it's, it's his... It's a couple of things. It's one, one, it's his critique of, of the industry, of being a musician. Why on earth would you want to be a professional musician? And it very much tying in with, with similar opinions to Fripp, probably in a more accessible way than the way Fripp would explain things. Um, but it, And it's also... Um, Answering all the questions he's got asked through his career, the endless questions they keep asking: Why did you leave? Yes, why aren't you still in? Yes, <laughs> from 1972 when he left. Um, you know, and so so the chapters are presented as the questions. This list of questions, and it's it's sort. It looks like it's not um, uh, travelling through time, chronological. <laughs> It looks like it's not chronological, and yet it kind of is. But he can jump around a bit, and that makes it much more engrossing. And, and you know, the specific questions he's asking in each chap, specific questions he's answering in each chapter, uh, makes it a brilliant read. It's one of the best ones of the music books I like. It's brilliant. 
It's sort of like a cross between an autobiography and a textbook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's very. And these three we're doing, we're doing the three drummers. It's interesting how their their book styles echo their their musician styles. So <laughs> the proof of one is sort of more literary and and, and thought through. <laughs> which is quite funny but then at the same time not not technically sound or anything like that you know which is interesting you know how do you get started why did you leave yes who managed the manager and all the stuff about eg and and uh, the music industry tactics it will make you very cynical but it's the truth oh you know and a lot of that stuff um is you know things that I I picked up over the years, but oh, actually it's like that. But it, it is about taking away the veil, and it does ruin it if you believe the. You know, last week I said about uh, the Beatles. I want to believe. Oh. <laughs> um, it takes that away. The 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 the, the, the sort of reality of of uh, the mundane lifestyle of, of of a famous musician. You know, to be really in in the. Uh, the stereotype is only the ones at the very top. Yeah, it's Led Zeppelin and it's Phil Collins and it's you have to be mega, 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 mega rich. So millions and millions and millions of records to be to really up there. Whereas these people just get by. Really, mm. the, the idea that, that Robert Fripp is a millionaire. Well, it might be now. With, I don't know. Maybe with DJM, we don't know. But generally, that's not a thing, and that's that's quite a. Yeah, but he never says this is how much money I've got in the bank. Well, no. you know, and presumably he's retired with you know in a fairly comfortable manner. He is now. That's good. But he, maybe he's framing his expectations on what he's seen around him. So people like um, Phil Collins and the uh, yeah and the other big rock bands. Because I mean, at the end of the day, he retired. Yeah, he just stopped. I'm not doing any more. Yeah. He did say at one point he had to stop doing. Um, was it Earthworks? Because it was too expensive to tour. Yeah, and that happened uh, twice. Yeah, um, probably three times. It certainly happened in the seventies. It's not mentioned in here. I heard somewhere about he saw a bit of sabotage to get him to go back to King Crimson. Then in the eighties, he was enticed back to John Anderson's tractor beam. Uh, but then at the end, um, it just wasn't financially sound. So he had to have a different band in, in the US than he did in the UK because he couldn't take the whole band over there. It's just too expensive to do jazz. Jazz is not financially viable, not since the seven, early seventies, probably. You know. Even with Bru- with Bru- Bill Bruford in it, yeah. But it, it sounds like he he did actually achieve. He did the thing he wanted to do all along. At the end, playing these these prestigious places in the US with these 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 the best musicians in the world, which you know the jazz musicians, the best jazz musicians are the best musicians in the world. I mean, you can't really, you know, if, if there's any genre that has that. For real, it's, it's jazz, isn't it? Yeah. So once he'd done that, and it cost him lots of money. <laughs> I, I, I saw Earthworks Mark II, the original Earthworks Mark II with Patrick Clahar, about ten times, because he because he was touring. It meant most of the time he'd have to play the UK because he couldn't. It's too expensive. I think by that point he was he, he could go to Europe, but to to really do world tours was was wasn't really financially sound. So I got to go and see him loads and loads of times and. It was interesting. We saw him at the start of the tour, middle tour, end of a tour, um, and it was very, very clear he was knackered. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, it, and you really saw how he just keeps going, man. <laughs> it's, it's Bill Bruford. It's so good, you know. And he, he, the guy's nearly falling over. So it wasn't that surprising when he said he, he's not. He's going to retire. You know that he can do this, and he can release a big box set and sit at home. He doesn't have to do this. This yeah, difficult there's, thing. There's, I mean. The, with all the King Crimson re-releases in the box sets, there'll be royalties coming from that as well. Yeah. See, that's the thing about a musician. That the idea is to build up a collection of work that provides royalties to take you through retirement. Yeah. And he's obviously done that because he's been a constantly working musician. Yeah. Yeah, and he's... he's, he's I suppose, I'm, I'm sure he says it in here. He's been lucky in that he's, he's been able to get that balance of doing what he wants and doing the big stadium. Although he, wasn't, he didn't do much stadium stuff. In the big bands, yeah, you know, he, he said King Crimson is the best compromise in that you get to stay in the nice hotels, but you get to play in seventeen four or something. Hmm. You know, you can't do that in years. 
So what do you think about his attitude towards musicians? And is it, a lot of it is about the difference between jazz musicians and rock musicians and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I overwhelmingly agree. There's n- not not with everything he says, but overwhelmingly, generally, I, I agree with what he says. And his, his, his you know, superficially can come across as just a snobbery about, well, the jazz is better, you know. Well, well, it is. <laughs> you know, rock musicians are useless. <laughs> it's just from the heart, man. I'm just going to go bang. Um, classical musicians are rigid and limited because they've got they're stuck in that thing. Jazz musicians can do anything, you know, literally anything. I'm going to improvise now, but, you know. Um, he he's the least technically able person in Earthworks Mark Two, and there are fans of Bill Bruford who'd be like, no, 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 he's God. <laughs> um, Bill Bruford is not a technical drummer, and it, no. Sorry, he's the best drummer. I know, creatively, he's not a technical drummer. He's just just really, really creative, you know. I do find it interesting because he sort of he says there's two types of musician. There's the yeah, there's the uh, creative type who you know make you know make can't really music. help it. They're yeah. not really in control of it. They just do it. And yeah. then there's a like the professional musician who are who's interested in you know. I could imitate and it, it can do it on, on the beard's got to go it's awful isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like such a good idea yeah, um, yeah there's like the, the the sort of professional musician who's very sort of um, yeah but very really good at delivering on, on, on sort of point and he saw himself in the former category as, as a creative he is definitely yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th- I think we said this in the UK video because that's the case with um, Alan Holdsworth as well. Um, and again, that's another thing people would disagree with. And, and Alan Holdsworth had criticism that he was like a yo-cat. He was just a studio-bound technician with no soul. And that isn't true at all. You know, and that's why, why UK didn't work because however fantastic music was briefly, that if, if Eddie Jobson is telling him, play the solo the same as on the album. And he's like, eh, what? what do you mean? <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? He plays it. <laughs> you know, that's what it sounds like. Um, so it shows how perceptions are so wrong about musicians and even the people who listen to that type of stuff have got completely the wrong idea of what's going on. It's interesting, isn't it? And, and he lifts the lid on that a bit, I think, with this. So that's really good. I don't agree, Like I said, I don't agree with everything. He talks about... Uh, yeah, he, t- he talks about prog rockers being the middle class thing. Mm-hmm. It's very much from the posh England stuff, um, which isn't true. It's measurably not true. Most of it comes from the same industrial towns that heavy metal comes from. It comes from the same place as heavy metal. Um, and it's a mixture of different classes, which at the time was like controversial. You didn't really do that. And, you know, I mean, Greg Lake. Um, you know, I think Fripp's granddad was a minor. You know, uh, Keith Emerson, John Anderson. You think you know? <laughs> I know he doesn't talk like that now, but you've listened to interviews from the seventies. He's he's from Accrington. Do you remember the advert? The Accrington Stanley. Accrington Stanley. Accrington Stanley. Who are they? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Milk. Give me some. <laughs> um, and you know, it's, yeah, you've got John Anderson, and you've got the choir boy, Chris Squire working together and that, that's that's the thing isn't it it's like it is and it is an extension of, the, of, of what happened in the 60s of, of do what you want man and he, he doesn't seem to see that so that's interesting I think it's a bit more um, I think Prog's a little bit more cerebral and that's probably why it uh, seems more middle class yes plus your well your Rock was essentially the sort of anglification of of American rock and roll, rock and roll and, and blues. blues. Yeah. yeah, so American working class music uh, taken up by British, British working class. class. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's quite it's it's nice to categorise prog as a sort of a middle class adjunct to um, yeah. classic rock, but really purely because it's European Europeanizing. <laughs> the the Ameri- Americanisms, yeah, but I mean, Bill Bruford is 
very middle class. He certainly is, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Even even in the, the early days, he was... <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think maybe that the, the middle class thing is more um, more it, visible. It, it's e- easy to, to pigeonhole. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like the pretentious thing, isn't it? it yeah, okay, it's easy to say it's pretentious. So, but really, when you pick it apart, it's, it doesn't hold up. You know, I mean, tell some topographic oceans. It is hard to say it's not pretentious. <laughs> but if John Anderson really does believe it, he's not being pretentious. It's stupid, but he's not being pretentious. He has to be pretending to, to be pretentious. You know, but, and, and yet, I'm sure there, there were probably a lot of people listening in 73 who were being pretentious. There's just high art. Um, and that's the... The misinterpretation about Prague, isn't it? That, that, and that why people don't like it. They think it's trying to be clever, or it's showing off, or something like that. And that's not what's happening at all. It's and that's you know the thing about women not liking Prague because it's sort of men showing off, <laughs> which isn't true either. You know, and, because really Prague is just doing what you want. It's just it's about it's about the freedom, isn't it? And, and if 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 punk. Was 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 a rebellion against that? That was a sort of force of conservatism, putting putting the barriers back up and saying you can't no, you can't do that. You can only do this. Yeah, so what else can we say about the book, Kev? Read it. <laughs> it's got all the information <laughs> there you need about his career, about the industry. So you'll learn if you don't already know all that stuff. You'll learn about that. You'll learn the story of Bill Bruford as a musician, but you tell me, autobiography. It's not really about him. It's about it his, is, his drumming and what yeah, happened with him drumming. It's a specific part of his life, isn't it? It's his professional life. Yeah, and, and there's you, not much personal in there, really. You, you don't, get a little bit of background. A little bit, yeah, and you don't get the personal stuff between the musicians, even really. No. A little bit. You hear about his friends with with Mike Rutherford and, and, and Phil Collins and stuff like that, and they have garden parties and things you, you get a sense of what he's really like kind of thing but it's not really in there because I don't care about that well, I don't want to know about that <laughs> you know which is very different to next week I think mm-hmm. yeah uh, we, did we look for we have tough fair enough yeah. okay cool yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the Bill Bruford book I, I recommend it okay so on, on the on the um, the book scale of a book or music autobiographies it's a six that's a six egg one because it's, it's for me that's just everything it's, it's, there's nothing you Maybe no, there is there is humour in there as well. Some of it's quite funny, so it's, it's got a bit of everything. It really has. I have to say, I mean, you mentioned it. It is incredibly well written. I yeah. mean, it doesn't it doesn't read really like um, a former member of a band has written down some words and yeah. it's been turned into a book. Actually, every paragraph is sort of you read it and you think, well, yeah, someone's thought about this. And really gone into to revision, which thought about how they're going to structure it. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty impressive on that front. I mean, for me, it's good as a sort of it's as an insight into prog. Uh, I'm not Bill Bruford's obviously got an amazing reputation, and I, I recognise that that he's a, an extremely good musician, and he's you know topped in terms of musicianship, he's top tier yeah. uh, of 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 the prog scene. But I'm not. I don't really idolise musicians like that. I'm not like, oh, this guy's amazing, you know. And it's good to not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a good thing. And it's when, you, when, you, when you're completely obsessed, it's very difficult not to do that. Yeah. Because so I, can... I, and I do, I do kind of do that, but at the same time, don't take it too seriously. Yeah. Because it's nonsense. So even though I don't do that, I did, I did enjoy this read. Um, and it does, you know, it goes on quite a lot. There's a lot of detail in there, which I'm sort of, I, I do, I'm finding it interesting. But not being like a mu- um, I wouldn't consider myself a musician. You know, I play a little bit on the piano. Um, I don't feel that speaking to me, but I'm still sort of getting something from it. Yeah. In regard to the the music scene in that era. Um, so I, you know, I'd I'd recommend it from from that point of view. Um, but a lot of the people who watch this channel. Will know all this. Yes, yeah, that's the thing. So if you already know all the facts, and a lot of the things we've said in the, on this channel are in this book, oh. a lot of the, you know, um, it, it confirmed what I already knew. Yeah. I was right. 
And I suppose I should explain before I egg it is that I'm not into autobiographies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really well, of, of any type, really. Well, even political autobiographies. I think. I that, that, yeah, they're always disappointed. Yeah, aren't they? that would be my sort of natural inclination. But uh, no, oh, really? I find p- other people boring. I want a good story, or I want some information. Yeah, uh, which this, this which is, is uh, yeah, which yeah. is what that gives gives me like. Yeah. Um, so in that on that score, it, it's it's a big success. So. Yeah, and he does. I mean, obviously, you know, what does he think of Robert Fripp? What's it like working with Robert yeah. Fripp? Is the question. Everyone wants to. Hear I mean, that is like intriguing, that. isn't but it? Is it funny and entertaining because they're yeah. both difficult people in very different but, ways. But that's the thing. He gets past that, and then he starts talking about how he put his bands together and stuff like that. And a lot mm. of the people are. People on this channel probably heard of, but you know they're, they're not people I've heard of, so that's not quite so intriguing. That's yeah, that's always yeah. a problem, isn't it? And then we made the album Apples. <laughs> the album Apple. What's that? <laughs> I've always had that problem. Yeah. You need to have heard all the music first. Yeah. <laughs> but, the the, you know, but there's definitely enough in here to uh, to keep you interested. Yeah. So you know, I'll give it five eggs. Yeah, I mean, if you're a pro and you haven't read that, you've got to read it. Yeah, I don't, don't see any way around that. You really should read this one. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Cool. Right, uh, see you next week for Phil. Yeah. Phil! All right, you, Phil! You ain't dead yet. All right, Phil. How are you, Phil? <laughs> are you going to go back and play in the cage? <laughs> right. Okay, are we going to... Should we very briefly put the beards on? <laughs>